Welcome, everybody, to a weekend edition of the Legendarium Podcast. I am Craig, and with me today... Megan Smythe. And? And also Megan Smythe. I mean, Ken Johnson. That's Ken me. Johnson. All right. Welcome, yeah. guys. It is a relaxed weekend episode, which means that all of our preparation was done in the last 10 minutes, as is known by the people watching on today's surprise live stream. Uh-huh. So, Or uh, it's still ongoing. I can't confirm or deny that. What? The live stream? No, the, the preparation is still ongoing. Oh, I see. Yeah, so the, the live stream uh, has been going for like an hour, hour and a half now. Uh, we've already done one episode on it, but now we're just going to kind of power through and do a, a weekender. So uh, hopefully this works out. <laughs> if you enjoy our Wheel of Tangents episodes already, then you might enjoy this one as well. But even less thought has gone into this one. So take that for what it's worth. All right, so yeah. if you're not familiar... The Wheel of Tangents, we have eight random r- r- random kind of nerdy topics, and we're going to talk about them if we land on them. We will get through as many as we can. In the past, we have sometimes succeeded in getting through all eight. Uh, sometimes we don't, but we are on a, a bit of a time crunch here today, aren't we, Megan? So I, I was going to say, are, are we t- the first Wheel of Tangents episode we did where it didn't have a name yet, we timed all of the uh, Everybody the hated we, that. Okay, good. Because I did Did too. you hate it too? Yeah. I love the timer. It keeps us moving. Well, so. I didn't mind it, except there were a couple of topics where we didn't have that much to say. And then we were like, oh, we still have five minutes left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we Plus can move on stressful. if we need we to. We got too much to get into Megan, three minutes. official wheel spinner. Spin the official wheel. Oh, woohoo! Officially. Here it goes. She is spinning the wheel and it has landed on number five. Number five. five. Number five is, what is the best book you've never read? Oh, you were excited the, about this the one. Best, I just think it's an interesting question, and I, 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 I find myself struggling with it a little bit. Do you guys have an answer off the top of your head, or, um, or do I, we I think need it's to an kind of interesting question because I always want to like narrow the topics. I have never read the Silmarillion. Oh boy! I literally uh, Craig loaned me a copy. I have it next to my. It's the next book on my book stand yeah. to read. Um. After the Wheel of Time or within, like, no, uh, the, the Wheel of Time the I'm wheel listening time? to on, on, uh, audio want to say on type. I'm listening to it on audio. So I listen to that in my car. Um, but yeah, so Marillion, I want to like sit and read it. So that, that will be the next thing, but I haven't read it yet. And I keep hearing from people who love it that it's really good. Yeah. Are, we, are we talking about, and I do like Lord of the Rings as so. in like critical acclaim? Wait, or, you can take this question however you like, Ken. Because I was also gonna, you know, Ken, talk in your microphone. Sorry, sorry, am I? I'm looking at Megan because yes, she's over there. But, just stop uh, it. The, the Silmarillion <laughs> was on my list as well because I have never read it. Also, never read the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh my <laughs> gosh! I will leave How now. How is that possible? I know, right? I another oh. book though that one of my friends has lent me recently is um. Jonathan Strange and Dr. Norrell. Oh, Mr. Sure. Norrell. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which I saw the the miniseries and loved it. And so my friend loaned it to me and said that it's even better in the book because they have all these footnotes that make it seem like it's actual history. And I just like that idea. Alternate history. I, I love alternate history. Uh, the one I was going to say is um, actually, and this is kind of embarrassing a little bit, but Beowulf. Oh, okay. Oh. I've never read Beowulf. It's long. I have I on the shelf behind you. I've got a prose copy and a... Uh, a, a verse copy of it. Might be checking that out from the Legendarium Library. You should. It's great. Uh, so I might say, it, well, yeah, it's hard. Like you said, Megan, you kind of want to narrow it down. Like, what is the best book I've never read? Uh, War and Peace, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. The book I should have read in college? And yeah, exactly. Moby Dick. Yeah. Uh, oh. See, now, yeah, now we're the whole... <laughs> Exactly, but if we, we got narrow a whole it down, spinning now. <laughs> if we kind of if we keep it to within the fantasy realm, right. or realms, mm-hmm. I suppose, then the question becomes a little bit tougher. Uh, not because I've read everything, but it's because it's like uh, it, the the world of fantasy is so atomized. Everybody has yeah. their own favorites, and so it's right. hard to say like what is the one best thing you've never read. But also, read. if there's one that you're really excited about reading, if there's one I'm really excited about reading, I make the time to read it. Like, I, I sure, find sure, it. Sure. Or if somebody hands me a copy, that immediately becomes the next one I'm going to read. So yeah. I, I'm going to go with um, actually something that I just picked up. So if you follow us on Instagram, go follow us on Instagram. Then you already know this. I just picked up the first book in N.K. Jemison's Broken Earth trilogy. Mm-hmm. Um, and the reason I'm going with this one, so I'm 25 pages into the first book, so I've never read any of them. I don't know really anything about them other than 
that this is the first author who has ever won three Hugo Hugo Awards for best novel in a row. In a row, yeah. Ooh. All for those three books in that trilogy. Ooh. They all won the Hugo for best novel. And so there's a lot of things you could, you know, a lot of people could make excuses as to why that might be. And there, there gets to be some pretty ugly discussions online around this very subject. <laughs> um, I'm, and I'm I'm not interested in wading into those, but what I would say is there's got to be some reason for it. Right. You know, there, there's got to be some reason why they're that critically acclaimed. And it, so uh, it, I've been meaning to read them now for a couple of years. And it might be the first here book we go. that I've read that Craig hasn't yet. Oh, you've finished it? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. How'd you like it? Yeah. Don't spoil anything, but how'd you like it? I liked the world building. Okay. She paints a very interesting world. I hated the second person narrative. Okay. Hated it. I I have some theories as to why she does that. I'll probably save those for when we cover it on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I see what you're saying. It's not for everybody. Uh, it, but yeah. I don't hate it. I think it is very effective at doing what it's what I think it's trying to do. And, and perhaps that if you know reading on maybe, but I, I the first time I read it, it just struck me as writing example or writing exercise that got sure, published sure. and I was like this is ridiculous yeah I I see what you're saying again I don't think that's correct but I understand why you'd yeah. say that okay but by so the end did of the book all... it, won me, it won me over so anyway okay anyway. so did we all have a chance to give mm-hmm. a book yep. Yep. yep okay all right Megan spin that wheel what are we at we are at number two, two. number two number two uh, Megan Oh, you're you're oh. reading the wheel of time. I <gasps> hey. am. How's that going? Fill everybody in. Oh so gosh. So we've talked about the show a little bit on these uh, tangent episodes, uh, and we've talked about casting and whatnot. But it's been a little while since we've talked about somebody actually coming to these books fresh. Uh, how's it going? Don't don't spoil anything for anybody. Spoil but anything. Uh, yeah, tell us where you're at and uh, how you're liking it. I'm having a lot of fun. I finished Crossroads of Twilight this week, which you, you I guess You say you finished, finished. I finished Ooh. Crossroads of Twilight this week, which I yeah, believe that's... is universally the least favorite that's of a big all milestone. of the books. Yeah. Um, and I listened to both of the episodes that the Legendarium did on those because I'm always interested in those takes. And you guys always bring up things that I've forgotten about or missed <laughs> somehow. Um, did, it, so did you, are, are you liking the series so far? Um, just, just broad... Are, yes. A thumb up or thumb down? It's kind of thumb in the middle. I'm somewhat indifferent where I, I want to know what happens. Like every time I finish the book, I'm like, oh, okay, I could read something else for a while. And then I'll, you know, read something else. I'm like, yeah. So what's going on with Wheel of Time? Yeah. yeah just, yeah. I want to see what happens next, especially because sure. I do hear that these last four books are just really excellent. So, yeah, a lot of, a lot of people will say it matters where you take a break. Okay. Because if you, you know, it's 14 books and right. mm-hmm. some people are built to just go right through that and that's fine. Mm-hmm. Other people, you know, don't have that <laughs> desire, right? And so you want to you wanna break it up with separate books, right? Right. Uh, as you're going through. So one piece of advice that I've heard, and I would say this is 100% accurate just based on my personal experience, okay. is don't stop after book 10. Okay. You have to go right into book 11 and yeah. then you can take a break if you want to. Oh. Maybe take a break before the Sanderson stuff uh, because, it, well, and then I've got to ask you this question. Do you feel like the slog is real? It's generally accepted mm. that at least nine and 10 and maybe eight as well are uh, what's known as the wheel of time slog where, you, you know, you, nothing's happening. You don't care. Why is... Uh, why are we hunting down Fael? Yeah, who are some of these characters I that we mentioned even a while seven ago? I seven into that. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. I don't know. I like seven. Um, I would say it helped. I did not notice the slog as much because I was listening to it on audio. Um, I think that helped me. I think in doing that, I'm missing a lot of important information and maybe not getting the nuances and remembering things as well as I normally would just sure. reading it. Yeah. But um. I uh, I can skip backwards, I can skip forwards, and I really like the narrators that I've been listening to. So I don't I don't oh, yeah. necessarily Michael I, Kramer and Kate Redding. I do like them a lot. Yes, they are great. Um, the official narrators of the Legendary Podcast. Yeah, this most recent book, I did notice it was definitely anticlimactic. Crossroads of Twilight, um, because it, I guess it was one that was supposed to be 
kind of one book and then it was split into two and the yeah. boring parts yeah. were put into the 10th book. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I did notice that. Pretty much that. Uh, I missed Rand. I'm finding Matt annoying, but that's a whole other thing. Ah, anyway, I you're know. Not really. This is a very unpopular opinion. I know. And one that I kind of share. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I yeah. appreciate that. I don't, I, uh, just to be clear, because I know I'm going to get raked over the coals if I go too strong on this. I don't hate Matt. I don't either. No, I don't hate Matt. It's just, I, I think one of the things that mo is most annoying about Matt as a character is that everybody else loves him so much. And I'm like, why? He's fine. He's yeah. good. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway. I know. He, he's just so dang whiny. I'm, well, I'm glad you're reading the books. <laughs> Don't stop after 10. I won't. Okay. Enjoy some other stuff in between, but only after you've read 11. Okay. So, all right. Yeah, it's, it's fun, though, catching up and, and then getting to listen to the episodes and see what everybody thought. And you all recorded them two years ago, so then I'll, I'll follow up with you guys and be Is like, oh my it? gosh, when you said this, and you all just look at me like it's I'm crazy. Only, it only feels like it's been ago. so much longer. A little oh. bit more than two years ago. <sighs> Spin that wheel, Megan. Let's go move on to the next one. Uh, we're on number seven. seven. All right, number seven. The You're worst... Welcome. TV show of the last five years or so. The worst TV show that you've watched or maybe given up on. Uh, I've got mine chambered and ready to fire. Oh. It is easy. Maybe you should go with that then. Yeah. You guys think about it for I, a second. I feel like mine should be easy and I've it was so awful that I've just forgotten it and blocked it from my memory. But... Uh, mine is called Insatiable. It is a Netflix okay. show. Okay. So Netflix has a approximately 8 billion shows that they put out on a weekly basis and this was one of them and it just kind of my <laughs> wife and I were scrolling through and we were both like uh yeah maybe it's so it's um kind of a send up of pageants and oh. it's supposed to be like heartland kind of southern pageant uh culture right yeah. okay uh but it's terrible it's really oh. truly one of the worst shows I've ever seen in my entire life. And I think I made it through, I don't know, four or five episodes. I kept trying to give it a chance, uh, but it's, so here's how I would describe the show. <laughs> <laughs> imagine, imagine you're an alien and you are tasked with creating a television show for all the aliens back home on your alien planet. And, uh, and you're supposed to, create a show to describe these human beings uh, okay okay but, but you're an alien so you kind of you see what they're doing but you don't know how to interpret it and so your television show is off it doesn't work you know some people might find it entertaining but as a uh, as a description of humans <laughs> it, it falls apart right okay. something's just wrong this is like that but the aliens are, you know, some writers in L.A. And they're like, oh, yeah, I've heard about all these southern Christians who go to uh, pageants and stuff. And they don't know that stuff. So they don't actually understand the culture. They're just... Yeah, so yeah. they're trying to do a send-up of it. And the best send-ups are usually from people within a certain culture. Right, who right. love it and understand the exactly. ridiculousness. So, like, we live in Utah. A lot of Mormon stuff around here, including some really great Mormon parody stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the the, uh, the satires about Mormonism and Mormon culture and sure. all of that stuff. And, uh, you know, all of the jokes that people want to throw out there you know, who aren't from Utah or who don't know many Mormons. Yeah. Well, they're pretty much all polygamous jokes to begin with. They're old now for us, but, uh, you know, they, they, they don't get it. Why would you expect them to? Right. Right. And so that's what this one feels like is uh, somebody was like, Hey, I'm going to make a show about Southern Christians. And then you ask, have you ever met one? Well, no, but why would I need to? Yeah. Right. And, I read all these books and there was a newspaper article. Yeah. I've, I've heard the stories. And it's and it, and there's a lot of I I seldom use this word because it's so fraught these days. But there's some pretty problematic stuff in there. There's the main girl used to be fat, but then she got skinny and now she's happy and popular and oh. doing pageants and stuff. And well, maybe not popular, but anyway. It's, oh, it did gets, you see that? It gets movie? weird. I'm sorry. Now you just reminded. There was that <laughs> movie of the the Jennifer Aniston movie. Yeah. Yeah. I, just, I can't remember what it was. It was on Netflix. It was awful. But, um, oh, I liked it. I had to rack my brain, but once I hit on it, it shone out like a beacon. Uh, Shannara. 
There you go. That was the one uh, Alex Alex oh, yeah. says. Alex, so often. Um, Alex remarked on the live stream. He said, it's oh. not Shannara. Wow. Uh, oh, absolutely, so, Alex. It is for me. Here's my defense. Okay. And that's that I actually made it through Shannara the first season. Oh, yeah, but not you were the, doing that. The running diary as you were going. That's true. Yeah. It, or to put another way, the diary. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. It, it, it was. Did it start out strong and then get worse? Or was it just. It started out Okay. Because I think I watched the first episode. Yeah, it started out okay. There were a ton of deviations, but I was like, well, I'm willing to see where they go with it. And then it turned out to be truly terrible. Yeah. But at least those first episodes were okay. Insatiable is indefensible from the beginning. So, Ken, go on <laughs> and talk about Shannara. Craig's running diarrheas were far more entertaining than <laughs> the actual show was. It was just, it was just so bad. They, the first episode, yeah, it took some liberties, but then by episode... Three, they were off and running on you know, teen. I mean, basically take any teen series and now it's teen series with swords. And all of the the teens acted very teenish like you'd see on any show. Yeah, it's, it was, it's, it's the CW does high yeah, fantasy. It was awful. And it's bad. So, uh, Megan, did you think of one? No. No? Okay, should we spin again? Sure. Let's spin again. We'll save you from having to think of one. All right, she's spinning, and it is on number three. three. Number three is, oh, what Craig is reading next. Oh. oh. So I wanted to talk about this. I already mentioned one because, uh, okay, so I did an Instagram story last night, and I was asking people to vote. Did you guys see that? Did you vote? Uh -huh. I, did. I did not have an opinion, so I did not vote, but I did see it. Yeah. So I am 25 pages into both um, uh, N.K. Jemison, so the, the what's called the fifth season. I okay. think it's called uh, 25 pages into that and 25 pages into Joe Abercrombie's The Blade itself. So this is uh, these are two series that get requested all the time. <laughs> oh, boy. So and it's not just on Discord and, and Reddit and whatnot. I get emails on a weekly basis. Why haven't you read these yet? Right. And so anyway, so I'm working on it. It's it's nice that fans are finding us to request their books <laughs> and right. that they care enough about our opinions. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who would have thunk? So have uh, Ken? You said you've read. You've I've read, read Jemison. Yep, I've all read three. Just the first. Just the first one. Have you read oh. Abercrombie? I'm into it. About 100 pages. Okay, Megan. Have you read either of these? I have not. Okay. This would be all new for me. Okay. Well, so I bring this up partly because I want to keep people in the loop mm -hmm. um, that these would be coming up potentially in yep. 2020. I've talked about. Uh, we we definitely have Jemison on our radar for 2020. So something to consider i have a feeling that the teams are probably going to get shaken up in 2020 uh, we, because because some of us have read this and that and some right. of us have yeah. read the other and so i, I imagine yeah. i know uh ken you and i might be interacting more oh, soon heavens yeah I know. please ah the lightning <laughs> lightning in a bottle oh it, it you know it's it's funny we we try not to you know let the the public perception Wayne too much, but but Craig and I actually get along pretty well. It's all right. I so. mean, we spent three days together in Atlanta last year or this yep. year, and you know, and we I both, was so worried about the two of you alone. And, out and there. we both we both came home. So <laughs> what's my, yeah? What's more important? <laughs> both so. came home. All right. Exactly. So. Anyway, funny. first law. I'm reading it because everybody kept saying such good punching. So yeah. So I'm into so it. it is interesting when I compare the two that the uh, first law definitely comes across as more familiar. It is much more like unto stuff that we have already read. Um, and so in that way, it's a bit like that. You know, it's the warm blanket effect. Oh, this is yeah. nice. Yeah, yeah I kind of want to keep reading this. With Jemison, as you said earlier, you were kind of complaining about the style that she uses, this second person uh, narration. Which she doesn't use for the entire book, which right. is it's, great. But... It's uh, when speaking about a certain character. Right. Uh, it's so jarring and so wildly stylistically different than anything that we've read so far that, you know, it's not a warm blanket. It's no. more like a cold bucket of water to the face. <laughs> but in a way, you want that sometimes. <laughs> you want to wake up and see something different. And even yeah. if after that you go back to, you know, if I if I read uh, Jemison first and then came back to Abercrombie, I would be coming back to Abercrombie a little more alert, I think, after that cold bucket of water to my face, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Anyway, yes. so that's where I'm at with that. I would be interested to hear everybody's takes on those. Um, 
keep it spoiler free, but go hit it up on the uh, on our Discord server. If you are commenting anywhere else, let me know your thoughts on those two series. I, I will be interested as long as you don't spoil anything for me. Yeah. So let's spin that wheel. Spin it. Okay, what are we on? Eight. Did we already do eight? No, we didn't. No. Okay. All right, this is another listener suggestion. The best Star Wars prequel movie. Oh. I'm so glad Ryan's not here right now. <laughs> <laughs> As his head just explodes. Uh, it's number I, three. Well, are we, are we talking about no, the three or are we talking about... The, the, the Star Wars prequel trilogy. There's oh, only okay. one Star Wars prequel trilogy and there are only three movies in it and the third one is the best. This yeah, is well, it, this is indisputable. That. It's indisputable. Yes. None of us dispute this. No. Spin that wheel. How, however, however, <laughs> Rogue One is better than Revenge of the Sith. Eh, yeah, that, you is can both, dis- eh, that is disputable. No. That's no. Uh, anyway. All right, Megan, spin that wheel. I don't think we're going to spend any more time on that one. We don't need to. Uh, we're going to make it through all these numbers, aren't we? Number, Number four. four. Hey, Have we, we haven't done, done four yet? Yeah, we haven't done four. Uh, all right, best sidekick. Your favorite sidekick from fantasy or sci-fi literature. Don't say Wayne. <laughs> I wasn't gonna. I was gonna say Samwise Gamgee from The Lord of the Rings. Nice. But if you, if either of you wanted that one, I would no, understand. No. But I just, I love about Sam that he is such an unlikely hero. And uh, he really does have to take on a lot. Like he's, he's not necessarily just there to prop up Frodo. He definitely does support Frodo in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. But he um, is Frodo's protector. He's his defender. He is one of those who um, doesn't, he can be just exactly who he is and it's exactly who Frodo needs. Um, And I just love Sam. I love Sam so much that if I get to have a little boy, I want to name him Sam. Yeah. Did you know that Tolkien considered Sam the true hero of the story? But that makes sense to me. Yeah. I just, I mean, he was even the keeper of the ring for a while. He, He was such a sweetheart he got to go and you know live with the elves and i just his there are so many moments with sam that just make me so happy like he has a song in the first book where he sings this ridiculous song and everybody goes what sam you're funny and he's like uh yeah you didn't know this (laughs) i've been funny this whole time it makes i'm the best and like when he's so excited about the elves and the elephants and i don't know i love sam anyway sam's a great there you go sam's my favorite all right i i actually i love I love the supporting character. Now, would Kaladin be a supporting character, a sidekick? He wouldn't be no. a sidekick. He'd no. be a mentor, right? No. So, so when it comes to Stormlight, there are three main characters. Right. Everybody, else, everybody else would else. be supporting. So like Adolin could be a sidekick. Yeah. Yeah, but my favorite sidekick in the uh, Stormlight archive is Teft, actually. Oh, okay. So okay. I, love, I love characters like that who are the, the older, not necessarily a mentor, but they're the older uh voice in the air that the jiminy cricket you know <laughs> sure just, well, just dispensing a little bit of of direction to the main character and and they've maybe a little bit battered and broken you know sure uh jean in the in, uh, in uh, the, the lies of lock are kind of the same way even though he's not older but he's still kind of that that same vein i just i love characters like that but i think teft might be yeah might yeah. be the no, one that's, for me. that's a good one actually uh you you brought up the one that I was going to say, which was Jean. Oh, okay. Uh, I really like his character, partly because the way that he works in the story is as he he accepts that he's the sidekick, but he knows, and uh, Locke knows that if it weren't for Jean, then Locke wouldn't be able to do what he does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He is vital to that pair. He's vital to every team that he's part of, and he knows it. But he also accepts that he's not the one with the, uh, you know, the oodles of, of uh, charisma, right. kind of dribbling out of his pores. That's Locke, right? Yeah. And so <laughs> I, I like how self-aware he is in that way. I think that's the mark of the good sidekick, though. It's the one who says, "I know I'm the sidekick, and I know I, the good I can do yeah. in my yeah. lane." You know. There I, you go. I like the sidekick. Uh, what have, What have we not done? What have we not landed on? And is this going to be an ultra short episode? I mean, we can keep going. Go ahead and spin that wheel, man. Okay. See six if you land on one. Six, the only one we haven't done. We haven't done six. Um, six and two? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's... Oh, you know, and one. Six and one. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's just choose one. All right, number one. It is on one. Wow. The Mandalorian. Oh. oh we, we've talked nice. about this a couple of times. I think we talked about it like when the first episode came out. We might have even mentioned it last week in the wheel, but uh, you guys 
weren't there for that. Correct. Um, and so how's it going with The Mandalorian? What are your thoughts on it so far? What very do you like? Much, what do you dislike? Very much enjoying it. I like the small scale feel of it. I like the uh, slow burn and the episodic nature. Although, and, and I'm not to get spoilery, this the I had some uh, issues with the latest episode. I'm but not gonna, I'm not gonna the get one into from the, last week or the one from today? The one that just released today as we're recording okay, this. Okay, I've seen it. Uh, just because it, it delved into a lot of the um, fan servicey, tropey westerns or uh, tropey heist stuff, and it it felt very. We don't have a real story. Let's just paint by numbers, basically. It, uh, it's it's nitpicking for the overall series, which I very much enjoyed. I've enjoyed the Mandalorian. I like those dour, stolid characters. Um, the man with the man with no name. Yeah, the man with no name characters. I like yeah. westerns, so it's all right. Kind of. Speaks to me. I think that's interesting that you are bugged by the tropiness because every episode I've watched, I've been like, oh, okay, so this is the episode where they go to a small town yeah, and yeah. teach everybody how to protect themselves. Yeah, you know, they have the like, Seven like, Samurai like, every, episode. Every episode has kind of its, and this is the thing that we do in this kind of literature, and this is the, you know, yeah. which I've quite enjoyed. I, I, I think the storytelling is great. I think Baby Yoda is adorable. I'm the girl, oh, I had to say it. Everybody um, loves Baby Yoda. I, I think it's interesting... Uh, acting wise for the guy who plays the Mandalorian that he's not he doesn't have any facial expressions because he doesn't ever take off the helmet and I hope he doesn't I just really hope ever, he never ever ever right interesting yes. okay. now we, I don't we know did. like maybe like if the show ends but also like if that's the code of the Mandalorian not to take off your helmet and if you take it off you can never put it back on I hope he never takes it off now I did love in the one episode the the seven samurai episode where we see him take off his helmet but we don't see we see the helmet on the table. We don't see right. him with his helmet off. But it's it's kind of annoying to me when they'll do some kind of emotional close up on his helmet, where you can <laughs> see that he's apparently feeling feelings. But since there's no facial expressions, it's like ah. So I feel the same way when I watch some kind of nature documentary where they're zooming in on some you know something is happening. They're going to zoom in on this animal, and I'm like, this is not a person. We can't see their face. They don't have human emotions. <laughs> right. Um, whereas the Mandalorian, we know that he does have human emotions, but we can't tell what those are necessarily. So I feel like those moments kind of fall flat for me. Although in the last couple of episodes, I feel like he's doing a better job of expressing emotion, even though he's got a helmet. Yeah. Even though he's got, you can't see the emotion, but you can see how he's expressing it. Yeah. I, I do like all of the side characters though, that keep coming up. Yeah. Um, like, like Amy which Sedaris ones? made me so happy when Who? she showed up. She was the, oh, like in that last episode, she was like the grizzled lady who owns the port oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. it was like gotcha, oh i'm gotcha. gonna watch his kid and then charge him for it so and it was one a, of the one yeah. of the problems that i have with it because i'm enjoying it as well uh, but i do want to bring up this whole mask issue he mm -hmm. can't take off his helmet and so he can't project any emotion and can you like that it for me it doesn't quite work uh because i i need something to latch on to and i can't latch on to the mandalorian yeah. emotionally right right and so, I think that's what one I of the reasons need, why people love Baby Yoda so much. Well, oh, what I'm I, sorry. What I need is a a sidekick who I can do that with. And Baby Yoda, as great <laughs> as Baby Yoda might be, it doesn't does not fulfill that role. Right. It you know Baby Yoda, yeah, Baby Yoda is just cute. He is there to sell toys. Right. Yeah. And that's fine as far as it goes. Um, I you know I'm fine with. It's also a nice wrinkle to throw into every episode. Like he's got to do these cowboy things, but then he's also got to make sure that he protects this kid. Yeah. So it's mm -hmm. a, a juggling act that I appreciate. Uh, but I don't have anybody that I care about through the show. So mm -hmm. Carl Weathers was there. Gina Carano was there. And uh, Werner Herzog was there. And, yeah. you know, all these characters come in and then they leave. And some of them are better than others. That kid on the Tatooine episode was terrible. Oh, true that. Um, but anyway, we have all these characters and then they just go and yeah. this is, yeah. And does that make sense? And so yeah. every episode is fine, but as a show, as a running show, uh, I, you know, I, I kind of, yeah. I, I think I said this last week where on every Friday when it releases, so they, they release the Mandalorian on Friday, but then that's also when all of the Apple TV shows release. So C and the morning show and for all mankind uh, and, and so on. And every Friday, I find myself much more eager to go watch those. Sure. Sure. And so, but I'll watch The Mandalorian and I enjoy it, but I don't care. It's not, 
pulling me in every week. Yeah, it's more about the situation and less about the character. Yeah. Um, okay, the yeah. last question. Can oh, sorry, my, Ken. Go on. No, I, I, I wanted to build on your complaint about the uh, supporting characters. It, it It's more of a, I think it's an unfulfilled expectation of mine going into the show. It's like, we got, we got all these great actors who are going to be on this show. I didn't realize going into it that they were only going to be on one episode of the show. <laughs> you know, I, I thought they were going to be... This is the supporting cast. We're yeah. going to see Carl Weathers every episode. We're going to see, you know. I was like, Bill Burr is going to be in Star Wars. This is going to be awesome. Oh, oh okay. He's gone. <laughs> anyway, I, Bill oh, Burr. Yeah. I, I love Bill Burr. Didn't like that? Did not. I did not. Because all I saw was Bill Burr. You know? I'm like, I'm not seeing a Star Wars character. I'm seeing Bill Burr acting. I'm like, eh. I don't know. I'm not with you there. I like Bill Burr. I think I, he's I, a good I like, performer. I, I like Bill Burr. I love watching him on all the things he does. I love his stand-up, but. That's that's how I feel about watching John, him act. John Travolta like, and everything he's in. So I'm like, okay, episode seven's coming up. This must be the one where Giancarlo Esposito comes in, and then we never see him again. It's, I, oh, I don't want that to be true. Well, it's I know I was very upset. It's the going thing. I'm yeah. I wanted so, more Ming Na. Right now, yeah, I love Ming Na. That's another one. I'm so I, I'm tempering my expectations, but I'm hoping in by season eight we get something a little bit more serial and a little less episodic. Yeah, I don't know. All right. Well, should we do our last question, please? Sure. So the last question is the best movie that we've seen so far in 2019. You, this is what you guys were furiously trying to remember. Yeah. Because frankly, <laughs> this has been a terrible year for movies. Yeah. Absolutely awful. Um, it, now, that's not to say that there haven't been diamonds in the rough, but it has been pretty rough out yep. there. Yeah. And so, you know, for every uh, for every endgame, there's a Pets Life 2 or something, you know? <laughs> uh, <yeah. laughs> Yes. For, well, I should say Angry for Birds every two was delightful, but for every the end game, there's ten. The secret pets life, life of twos. pets. Yeah. <laughs> is that what it's? Secret yeah. life of pets. There you go. True. Anyway, um, okay. So, <laughs> favorite movie though that you've seen this year? Let's let's think through some of what we've seen. I enjoyed Hobbs and Shaw, but there was too much of it. Oh, I thought sure. it, it fulfilled on its promise of exactly what it was supposed to be, but it was you know what it was supposed to be plus another thirty five percent. Yeah. Uh, so it was just too long to enjoy. Could see that. To, or to, I guess, to put in my favorites category. Um, I seriously, I scrolled through a list of the top 50 movies of 2019. It was number 28 before I got to a movie that I had actually seen. Oh, nice. Was it Mission Impossible? It was Endgame, I think. Yeah. And I think Endgame was probably my favorite movie I saw this year. Um, just, I, 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 I enjoyed the emotional impact. It was long and there was a lot going on in it, but I really like what they did with all of the characters. Um, particularly I enjoyed that they finally made Guardians of the Galaxy like relevant in yeah. the quote unquote real world. Sure, sure, sure. Um I just think Nebula is a fantastic character. All right. uh, She's seriously I, underrated. Yeah. I, I like that it wrapped up so many of the storylines and also like so it's a place where you could stop, but also it's a good launching point for other movies. I also would like to I know it just came out, but Knives Out oh, was yeah. a I lot seen that of yet. fun. Oh yeah. Yeah. Good. I really, it was not exactly what I thought it was going to be. And I was like, oh, okay, this is way better than I thought it was going to be. Good, good, good. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm excited here for to it. say that. So let me, that. Throw a, uh, let me throw a couple titles out there for you. John Wick 3. Haven't, haven't seen it yet. Seen it. Oh, my gosh. I know. I know. I'm, I'm slow on the John Wick movies, which is sad. Have you seen any of them? Uh-uh. Get out. What? <laughs> Mr. Punchin? I know. I just haven't gotten Get around to it. I haven't out. gotten around to it. Uh, John Wick 3. Any John Wick movie is going to make a top list for me. Uh, <laughs> I I've, I'm very excited to see I, them sometime. No, you're not because you haven't seen. Because I haven't, but I haven't seen either that's, Pacific that's Rim like movie say, either. It's like when you have someone who like <laughs> a really undependable friend who's never there for you, right? But they're always like, "Oh, I love you," and no, you're like, "No, you don't. no, no, you don't. You <laughs> clearly don't because you're not prioritizing me." Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Do not tell me you're excited to watch John Wick when clearly you are not. See, but I haven't seen it yet, so that's how I, <sighs> I... I have a feeling when I see it, I'll be like, okay, now I'm He's in. trying to get excited to see it. I just... I've got other things going on and no, stuff. I'm like, don't. okay, I'll get to it eventually. Ken, don't I'll get to it that. eventually. Did anybody right. see the... Men so, oh, I'm... There's another another title. The Joker. Or just Joker. Yeah. Okay? Neither of you saw this? I haven't gotten to it yet. Oh, my good I told you. Lord. I've been, I I've been slow on the uptake with movies. <sighs> so this was an especially rough year at the movies for you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there I don't. Was... I don't even know what to say. I I don't know how to respond to this. I'm so upset right now. <laughs> I can't. 
deal with this. There was a I, point earlier where it's like every two, every five dollar Tuesday, I was there watching just, a movie, and I just the last six months have been. Bad. Oh, right. I thoroughly right enjoyed now, the Terminator movie. Was it the best movie of the year? No, enjoyed oh, the Terminator but I enjoyed movie? it. No, come on, no. <laughs> I thought it was ridiculously awesome. What is awesome. the matter no. with you? No. I'm not saying it was good. I'm saying I enjoyed it. <laughs> Fair enough. I, Fair <laughs> enough. Right now, I think Fallout is on my list, and that's only because I haven't seen Ford v. Ferrari yet. <sighs> I have heard good things about that one. I'm excited to see that. You know what? I'm done with you guys. All right. We should, oh, snap. We well, what else? This. What else? No, that's it. Oh, okay. You don't, wanna, you don't want to. You don't want to get the Wait, rest I, of your I list. don't want to talk about movies anymore. You guys, uh, we haven't seen any of them. No, exactly. If you guys, uh, whoa! I'm sorry that we saw other movies than you did this year. I haven't seen any movies apparently. Did you see Frozen too? No, I haven't even seen that yet. What? I know. Th- you have a teenage daughter. Yeah, but she's a teenage daughter. She's not six. All right. You know <laughs> what? I didn't go to that by myself in the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> All right. Fine. You know, I'm not I, judging. You I for actually that. when uh, when I was I, I worked at a bank when I was 25 years old, and uh, we didn't have any kids yet, and um, I had an afternoon off, and I didn't want to go home yet, so I went down. I walked down the street, went to the movie theater, and I was like, "What's playing?" I just kind of walked in, and what's playing? Uh, Brave. This is when Brave was out in theaters. Nice. I was like. I guess I'll go see that. Uh, all right, I'll go see. I think it's Pixar, right? Disney yeah. Pixar. So I go see Brave. It's two thirty in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in a full suit. I got the tie. I've got everything. You know, I've got my, my hair did and all that stuff. Because uh, you know, I worked in a bank, and yeah. so here I am, <laughs> this like somewhat well dressed man in the theater alone with a bunch of like moms and their gaggles of children. <laughs> Uh, mostly girls, you know, and it was just the most awkward thing. <laughs> the movie was fine, <laughs> but I, I just, I spent the whole time so self-conscious. I was like, D- I sh- really should have thought this through. So yeah, that's it's, awesome. And on that note, <laughs> shall we call it? Okay. All, All right. right. So we're gonna call it for this weekend episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We're back next week with our Hobbit episode. We're wrapping up the Hobbit uh, with Kyle and Stephanie. So be there for that. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for listening today. If you enjoy the show, support us at patreon.com slash legendarium and join the conversation at thelegendarium.reddit.com. Ask us for a Discord link or just go find it on Reddit. You can join us there anytime for some more live conversation. Hope you do that. We really enjoy interacting with all of you there. So I think that's it. We'll see you next time. I promise to see a movie this week. <laughs>